unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, And Lord, I have listened to the rich and the doors of his holy and divine word. Most holy and almighty Father. Lord, here we are, a few of your baptized believers. Have assembled themselves to call upon your holy and righteous son. Lord, we come for no shameful fashion. Neither for no outside show. But Lord, we come because you said every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. And Father, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. But Lord, we have so much to be thankful to you for. Lord, you brought us from a mighty long way. And Lord, we just want to take time out to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your rain. Lord, I want to thank you because when I rose this morning, I was folded in my right mind. Thank you, Lord, that nobody had to help me to run. I was still able to put one foot before the other. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for putting on my heart to come out to your house and worship. And Lord, now that I'm here, I come by to praise your holy and righteous name. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Lord, in times like this, we need a Savior. Father, we don't need a fear, but we need to put our trust in you. For Lord, we know that you can make everything all right for the help of medicine and the healing of your Lord. And in the trunk, something of a home. So, Lord, I pray that you hold our hands while we run this Christian journey. Because, Lord, sometimes we love you. And sometimes we love you. Sometimes it seems like the weight of the world is on our shoulders. Lord, keep us and hold us. But we realize we can't do nothing without you. Lord, we need you in our homes. We need you on our jobs. We need you in our church houses. We need you every Sunday, every minute, every hour of the day. We come praying for the sea all of this land and country. As the bereaved families. That's a special blessing to the Smith family. Lord, we come lifting up the Brooks family to you right now in the name of Jesus. Do what you, Lord, as only you can. And bless your rich word today. Lord, bless the shepherds you planted over here to lead the guidance. Take them down in the deep trenches of your knowledge. And let your word go forth with boldness and clarity and take root in our lives. So we can be better than what we are. These are the blessed ways. In our God and Son Jesus say, let's just say thank God. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord this morning. Once again, we welcome all of you that are joining us live on Facebook. We welcome all of you that are joining us. The CLBC family, we love you. We thank God for you. Our prayers are with you. We understand that we do recognize um, the record and the fact that these, uh, the numbers are rising. So we uh, encourage you to stay at home and worship virtually. We encourage you to stay at home and worship virtually. Worshiping virtually is all about relationship. And so I want you 
to know and understand this morning that we love you with the love of the Lord. We pray, God, protection over your home, your family, your body, your mind, your spirit. We encourage you this morning uh, to be confident in the record that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He loves us, and he's here for us. To our CNBC family, we welcome you and to all of our virtual family, those in Dallas, Homeward, those in Houston, Minnesota, those in North Carolina, those um, in Colorado, wherever you are, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. This is the day that the Lord made, and I will rejoice, I will be glad, I will be excited, I will be excited in who the Lord is and what the Lord is doing.
preservers and check on them, make sure they're all right, okay, and see if they need anything. Pray with them and for them, and then tell them that you love them with the love of the Lord. I thank God uh, for a great membership that is obedient and that understand that serving the Lord does not stop when the building closes. Amen. Being a Christian is not somebody that go to church. Being a Christian is the people who live the life. Amen. Who walk this way. Who accept the principles and the teaching of Jesus Christ and pattern their life and have the that. That's the Christian. And so thank God for two servants that he had still ministry. And uh, serving God in these difficult and challenging times. We are blessed to have all of you here today. Amen. Luke 7 and verse 11 says, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came not near to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Said unto her, We not. He came and touched the buyer. They that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. He that was dead said up. And began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. There came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God had visited his people. The grass withered and the flower faded away, but the word of our Lord remained forever. This morning, I will talk about for a few moments. It's never too late for Jesus. Amen. Look at your neighbor at home, your loved one. Tell them it's never too late for Jesus. Come on. Come on. Tell somebody it's never too late for Jesus. Amen. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, I come here to share with you this morning that we all have experienced circumstances in our lives or in the lives of someone we knew that appear to be hopeless. It seems as though the situation is too difficult for any good to come out of it. Yeah. Too often, in these situations of hopelessness and despair, and we give in to despair. Despair, my brothers and sisters, is a crushing way that seemingly squeezes the life out of us. The dictionary defines despair as the complete loss or absence of hope. To lose or be without hope. This is why every day appears to be the same with no change. Life appears to be hopeless. One person said, losing your life is not the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing is to lose your reason for living. How well this echoes the sound of despair. You lose all hope, you lose all reason to live. In Luke, the seventh chapter, we find that Jesus had come upon a woman that must have been in a state of despair. Yeah. No doubt this woman felt helpless and hopeless. Yet she discovered that with Jesus, it's never too late. Yes, I'm already by the way. Luke, my brothers and sisters, present amen, two classes or two opposites in this story. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Comes upon a funeral as the backdrop for another opportunity for a supernatural demonstration of Jesus' deity. The combination of Jesus and funerals will always result in unexpected and life changing, life altering changes. How about a witness of living? My brothers and sisters, the first thing I want to share with you here today is that amen. It's never too late for Jesus to restore your hope. I say it's never too late for Jesus to restore your hope. 
Luke tells us in this text that Jesus and his disciples and many people entered the gate of the city of Nain. They had to get this woman in the midst of a funeral procession. And many people were with her. They were on their way to the grave. They were on their way carrying her only son. And the Bible said that she was a widow. The Bible does not say how her son died. The Bible does not say how long she had been a widow. And that leads me, my brothers, to let you know, amen. Jesus can restore your hope even in a desperate condition. The Bible says that she was a widow. She had no husband. She had no support. And we are not told how long she was a widow. We just know that she was a widow. And in these times, a widow had a difficult situation. There was no social program to give her financial aid. The life of a widow was still a hard work just to have something to eat day by day. The Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy, amen, the 24th chapter and verses 19 through 21, it tells us about the law of gleaning. Amen. It says here in Deuteronomy 24, 19 through 21, when thou couldest down the harvest in thy field, and hast forgotten the sheep in the field, thou shalt not again go and fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thy hand. Verse 20 to 1 24 says, And when thou feedest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the bowels again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. Says the verse 21, when thou gatherest thy grape of thy vineyard, thou shalt not leave it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. God had established amen, the means and the system by the way the widow in her destitute situation may go to a field and reap or clean the leftovers from that field. How about this today? She was destitute, but in the midst of her desperate uh, condition, she had a confrontation with Christ. I said, in her desperate condition, she had a confrontation with Christ on her way out of the city of Maine, which is 25 miles away from the Capernaum, where Jesus had just healed in the same chapter a centurion servant. He did not go to the centurion house, he but spoke a word, and the centurion servant was healed. But on his way to Maine, when he got to the gate of the city, there was a confrontation with a woman in a desperate condition. She ran into Christ in the midst of the crisis. Now we have to hear this morning. In the midst of our desperate condition, we have to understand that Christ will show up and confront our situation. That's all right about it. Notice in the text, amen, there's a confrontation between two parties because the text says when Jesus entered into the city, his disciples and many people followed him. And when he got into the city, there was a confrontation with a funeral exiting the city, and many people were following there, were following this widow who was going to bury her only son. Now, my brothers and sisters, woman in the text had lost all the hope. There was nothing else in her life to rejoice about. Her husband was dead, and her only son just died, and she was on her way to the graveyard to deposit his remains into a cold and unforgiving grave. This widow was helpless and hopeless, and death has a way of making us feel helpless and hopeless. But I'm going to tell you that it's never too late. I said it's never 
too late. She was on her way to bury uh, her bloodline. But the Bible says, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, We not. With these two little words, Jesus restored her hope. He simply said, We not notice that this is one of those miracles performed by Jesus when the recipient of the miracle did, does not actively see. Y'all were hearing me today. Got to understand that the grace of God is at best when human initiative is no factor. This woman in the text had resigned herself to her pitiful predicament. She had long since buried her parents and now buried her husband. And now she had accepted the fact, amen, that walking through the graveyard would be her life. Life for her had lost its meaning and hope, and hope, and she did it all alone. Nowhere in the text of the Bible says that she sent for Jesus. I said, no one in the text of the, doesn't say in the Bible that she sent for Jesus. Her friends had not introduced her to Jesus. But in the midst of her hopeless, desperate condition, she had a confrontation with Jesus at the gate of the city called May. Yeah. I'm already about that. This is somebody who made my brothers and sisters listen to me here in the midst of a painful and hopeless situation. And you need to hear me when I say, amen, that Jesus is on your street. I say, Jesus is on your street. He's here right now. Yeah, he will show up, amen. He's in the vicinity of your pain. He's in the vicinity of your problem. He's in the vicinity of your predicament, your hurt, your brokenness, your failure, your crisis. He is in the vicinity of your despair. And I'm going to tell you, it's never too late. The Bible tells us in Psalms 46, Mother, that God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in the trouble. I've got a wisdom today. David said, Yea, if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because Jesus is in the vicinity. Thou art with me, thou wall and thou stout, they comfort me. The psalm said in Psalm 27, What the Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Take your loved one, take your family number, he's in the vicinity. He's on your street, hey man. He knows what you're going through. And he spoke the words to this woman in her desperate condition. She had a confrontation with Christ. And he spoke the words of restoration to her when he says, We. I'm ready about that. I'm going to tell you that your desire does not line up with your destiny. Your sorrow and your hopelessness is no match for his sovereign. Yeah. How I many you know that Jesus specializes in breaking up funerals? I say Jesus specializes in breaking up funerals. Be careful before you start giving up on things that appear to be dead. Jesus wants to restore hope, and I'm here to tell you that it's never too late. I'm all right, brother. Now, the second point I want to deal with you today is not. Not only is it never too late to restore hope, but also it's never too late to reverse your situation. I said it's never too late to reverse your situation. Somebody here looking at me right now, somebody in the home right now, you think it's, it, it ain't bad. If your hope is long past, you think there's, uh, that there's no way to get down with your end, you think it's too difficult, but there's nothing too hard for God. What is impossible with me? Is possible with God. God got a way of reversing your situation. He turned this funeral into a family reunion. Now, come on, help me hear this morning. The Bible said that Jesus stopped the funeral after speaking the words of hope to the woman. He proceeded to stop the funeral procession. And we're right about that. I said, the thief coming but the kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus came that we might have life. And then we might have it more abundantly. Listen to what verse 14 tells us. He came and he touched the Bible. And they that bear him stood still. Notice he spoke to the situation and he stopped it. 
Amen. Amen. When was, when was the last time you spoke, amen, uh, to something that seemed to be dead in your life? When was the last time you looked at something not from the natural life but in the spiritual life? Amen. He spoke to yourself and told yourself, I'm coming through this. It may look dead, but with God, all things are possible. I got this today. Jesus is able to reverse your graveyard the situation. Am I right about it? The universal situation when he shows up, when there is a confrontation with Christ in the midst of your crisis. Am I right about it? He can show up in Canaan and turn up. He can show up in Canaan and turn water into wine. I tell you, he can reverse the situation. He can show up by the wayside and be of a blind ball of real estate man. Sight. I'm a real body. He can show up in the crowd and heal a woman that had an issue of love for 12 long years. He can show up in Jarvis' house and heal his 12 year old daughter. Show up. Uh, the fifth chapter at the pool of Odessa and ask the lame man, do you want to walk? Where thou be made whole? Amen. 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 He can show up, my brother and sister, in, and transform a trailer tormented storm into a tranquility on the sea of Galilee. He has a way of reversing our situation. I'm talking about you today. You, know, you may be in a big situation, you may be going through something like right now. You may be in despair, you may think it's hopeless what you're dealing with right now. I'm going to tell you, it's never too late for God to show up and work a miracle in your life. The Bible tells us in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things, all things work together for the good of them that love God. And to them who are called according to His Purpose and simply means that God can reverse the situation. Job would say to something like this What men meant for evil, God reversed it and made it for good. I'm a right about it. I know that God can take your test and make it a testimony. I know that God, like I'm here today, I know that God can transform the universe, your sorrow into joy. He can reverse the universal problem yeah, into promotion. He can reverse your pain into purpose. God is able to reverse your situation. And even now and then, it all for a miracle to happen. Hey, I said, it all for a miracle to happen. You need to understand that something uh, difficult is going on. Even a miracle in the Bible have one thing in common. It, it started with a problem. I said, every miracle in the Bible started when there was a problem. I said, every miracle in the Bible started with a problem. God has the way of reversing the situation. And I'm going to tell you this morning, if you got a problem, amen, you might be a captain for a miracle. You might be sick right now. You may be a captain for a healing. You might be there destitute right now, but you may be a captain for a confrontation with Christ. Y'all want to help me today. Bible tells us, amen, to the child of God, when you realize that your condition in this world cannot include your position in the kingdom of God. Your, your position in this world, your condition in this world cannot include your position in the kingdom of God. I am a child of God in spite of what I'm going through. I'm a child of God in spite of what I'm dealing with. Amen. And this is the confidence we have in Jesus Christ. And we have the victory. Not gonna have the victory, but we have the victory right now. He don't have the victory. Am I Woman in our text did not know Christ. Oh, but she happened to run into him. But as his child, my brother and sister, she, amen, uh, you should realize that there ain't no accident that Jesus is on no street. No accident that he's on the yeah, road going into my name today. No accident that he met the 
this formula. Amen. In the midst of her desperate, destitute condition, she runs into a confrontation with the Christ, the miracle worker, the Son of God, the Yeshua Hamashiach, Christ the Lord, the deliverer, the healer, the way maker. In the middle of the battle, the great man morning star, she ran into the he restored her hope and he reversed her situation. Wish I had somebody who made it over God reverse your situation on your way to hell. But God reverse your situation. Ah, oh, you were sitting like this woman in a dead, destitute, desperate situation. But the Lord showed up and made a way out of her way. You know what you say? Whenever he shows up, he shows up. He's an old time God. And time doesn't work in time, brother Angel. Time works in oh. Whenever he shows up, he's right on the time. Y'all go about to praise the Lord this morning. Y'all go make me shout all by myself. Amen. Somebody in that home right now, right in whatever room you're in, y'all be shouting right now. Amen. Because Jesus is on your street. Amen. He knows your neighborhood. He knows what you're going through right now. And he's in the vicinity today to heal. He's in the vicinity to restore hope. He's in the vicinity. Amen. He's in the vicinity to reverse your situation. Look what the Bible said. He came down and took the coffin. They, uh, he touched the casket. He touched the casket, not the boy. Touched the container, the depository of a life cut short. He touched the casket, but he spoke to his conscience. I said he touched the casket, but he spoke to his conscience. I'm going to tell you that when he spoke, he had to speak, not yet to this body in the castle. He had to speak over in the spiritual realm because the boy was there. I got to run. I said, he, had to, he, had to, he was speaking to the natural body. He spoke to his soul. He spoke in the spiritual realm. He told him, get up and rise up. Told a young man, I say unto thee, rise and are anybody. Listen, my brothers and sisters, amen. Because, amen, he was a rabbi, because he was a Jew. Certainly, a Jew could not touch anything, he did. But he just to cast it. He was not afraid to break tradition. Uh, he was not afraid to break tradition for you. Something that wasn't supposed to happen will happen when Jesus touches it. Messes that you were not supposed to get, you weren't supposed to get out of. He's able to transform your mess into a message. Ah, he's able to transform it into a miracle. He will touch your situation. He will turn it around. Jesus wants to reverse, amen, a graveyard situation. Amen. Ezekiel has candy fall free. God told him, prophesy to the fall, speak to the fall, preach to the fall, because if you receive the word of God, you can, you can reverse your situation. Jesus said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. I don't read about it. This is not only restore hope, but not only reverse uh, the situation, because it's never too late, even though the Lord was dead. Jesus said this morning, Brother Kenny, it's never too late. He not only restored her hope, Sister Miriam, not only did he uh, reverse her situation, then the third and final thing he did, he resurrected the dead. The Bible said, he told the young man, I said, we rise. And the Bible said in verse 15, he that was sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. Not only did Jesus restore her hope and stop the spirit of possession, not only did he touch the cast and say unto the young man, I said to him, right. not only did he reverse her situation, so to the Lord, the Bible said, the dead boy, get up. Yeah. Dead boy, arise and he began to see. That's my last one I'm going to show you today. I don't care how dark and difficult, how bad your condition look. Jesus can restore your hope. He can uh, reverse your situation. And he can resurrect dead things 